Hey, we're live on Twitter with uh, the Dog Sports guys, uh, Graham and Jeremy, talking about um, COVID and what it means for football. And uh, so welcome, guys. And let me go live. So where do we start? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, okay, first off, I'd like to say, you know, we all want football, right? So we may say some right. things that you guys don't necessarily believe or choose to have a different f thoughts on, but we all want football, you know, right. and, and so yeah, how do we get there? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think the, you know, the first place to start is probably with, with Jeremy's article from earlier in the week, um, you know, it, it's very uh, Georgia-esque in the Kirby Smart era to not disclose anything that uh, they don't want to disclose. Um, so, you know, it's it's really tough because with the lack of information, you know, is there 20 cases? Is there zero cases? Is there 50 cases on the football team? Um, and, you know, not knowing that, I think at least in the very focused sense of Georgia football makes things difficult to assess kind of where we are and, and what the odds of having a season are. Yeah, I mean, I think the the news was, you know, we saw Notre Dame have, having positive athlete, uh, test, athletes test positive. We saw Clemson with a bunch, Alabama, and, you know, all it's there. I think it's everywhere, and I think – this is the path that we've chosen as a country. We didn't completely shut down. Some places never really shut down. So, um, you know, flattening the curve, people, I, I, as I understand, flattening the curve means just keeping our hospitals um, under from being overwhelmed, not necessarily to diminish the, the, the virus. So we've done that. I don't think our hospitals ever got overwhelmed, but the virus sure isn't going anywhere. Yeah, and one of the important things I think about uh, the response in college football is that uh, this is a scenario that I think most university administrators and certainly athletic administrators uh, never thought they would prepare for. Uh, and of course, they're all sort of, uh, you know, shooting at a moving target here in terms of, of what the response will be. Uh, we've learned a lot uh, from a public health perspective about what kinds of measures um, you know, are effective at, at reducing community spread. Um, you know, there was a time three months ago when we didn't know, uh, you know, the effects of, of air conditioning and, and heating and air systems, uh, right. the chances of spread on cardboard versus stainless steel surfaces, things like that. Um, you know, and we're getting some clarity on those kind of issues. The, the problem is while our clarity may increase the behavior of um, fans and uh, student athletes, um, you know, it is the same now as it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, there was an interesting uh, post over at uh, SB Nation's LSU site and the Valley shook uh, yesterday, uh, which just flat out said, uh, it's an opinion piece, but flat out said, we're not having college football this fall. Uh, and it was from an LSU perspective and talked about the fact that, uh, you know, the Bayou Bengals um, have had to quarantine uh, you know, a couple of dozen players at this point, a couple of dozen student athletes. Um, and there, you know, there's no absolute certainty on this, but it looks like that was an outbreak uh, that was centered around the uh, off-campus Tigerland bars, uh, <laughs> you know, right there on Highland Road. Uh, in oh, yeah. Baton Rouge. Uh, over 100 cases have, have come out of there. Several of those establishments have been shut down in the past 72 hours. Um, the problem that you have is that there's a real distinction between what is possible and what is practical uh, in terms of the response, both at the administrative level and you know, the team athletic level. Um, college kids do not make the best decisions, even in the best of times. Um, asking them to uh, make appropriate decisions uh, as, you know, uh, captaining the ship of public health is is really a recipe for disaster. And that, I think, is the realistic problem uh, that a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of folks are, are not really coming to terms with. Yeah, well, and I mean, having been to Tigerland, uh, I can assure you that's not the first outbreak of any kind that happened at that establishment. But, you know, <laughs> Having, having had having had the virus back in, in March, um, 
you know, I struggle a lot because as Josh already said, as a fan, I, I want there to be college football. It's, you know, it's one of the things in my life that, you know, I really, really enjoy and that kind of takes me out of reality. And it's a, it's a great outlet for me personally. And I know for a lot of us, um, when it comes to, you know, like I, I, I had the thing and I, and I know what it was like, and I know it's different for everyone. And, you know, a lot of people have no symptoms and a lot of people have bad symptoms. And, you know, some people are ending up in, in hospitals on ventilators. Some people are dying. Some people never know they had it. Um, and my issue, you know, it's the optimistic side of me will, will read some information like, you know, oh, well, as this virus has spread through a ton of different immune systems, the, the symptoms that, that people are getting are weakening or whatever, and there, there will be the positive spin on things. And then I'll, I'll go back and, like, remember how I felt for three weeks in March, um, you know, well, laying I, on the couch I, I, in, in a sleep I, for 18 I, hours. So, you yeah. know, it, it, and it's like, so I, what? what is the tipping point? You know, it's like, are we going to decide as a society and as, as a – as college football, are we going to say, you know, it's okay and we're going to roll the dice on all these kids getting it, even though they're finally tuned athletic machines, despite the fact that maybe one of them has a sickle cell they don't know about, or one of them has another pre-existing condition they don't know about. And then what happens if, you know, worst case scenario, someone, someone gets coronavirus at a football practice or in a weight room and, and they die, you know, I mean, that's what happens to the universities from a, from a legal standpoint and Jeremy, you're much more qualified to answer that than I am, but it's a, it's a lot of what ifs that if I was an athletic director, I'd be very, very afraid of. Well, I think that clearly the number of tests are increasing throughout the whole United States, but I think that has a lot to do with people are going back to work. They're going back to normal. They're going back to campuses. So there's those folks are getting tests. So right. this virus clearly was a lot more widespread than even we thought in April and May. Um, but, you know, it seems to me that, that these athletes that are coming in here, I mean, they're showing up for, you know, volunteer workouts. They're clearly asymptomatic. I mean, no one is what you were experiencing when you were sick. There's no way you would have gone for a voluntary workout. So does that, yeah, does yeah. that, does that factor into any of the calculus in this? I mean, that, I, I think it does, you know, I mean, I think that it's, it's easy to say, you know, these guys are in the top 0.1% of, you know, physical health probably amongst our population. Um, but it's also the question of, you know, I mean, AL.com wrote an article yesterday asking the question if, if LSU and Clemson had an advantage for the football season because they've already had so many players test positive. And so it's like, it, it, yeah, which is, you know, an absurd <laughs> kind of reality to be in but you know that it, it's is that how we're going to look at this is is herd immunity like the advantage and if so <laughs> then do i really it's... feel good about pulling for uh you know for my team to go ahead and get the virus so that none of them are going to get <laughs> sick and i'm not going to lose a starting quarterback in the middle of the season because i i don't like the idea of that <laughs> If we're shooting for herd immunity, I just want to go ahead and put in my uh, plug for Marshall for for your 2020 <laughs> national champions um, with with their thundering herd immunity. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean, Graham points to to what is really a uh, two related issues that I think are very significant. That and it kind of goes hand in hand with what we're seeing, you know, college football players talking about on social media and. Um, you know, other you know, avenues that they have is uh, the fact that a lot of uh, specifically football players uh, are being asked to come back and take part in uh, workouts and do all of these things to, to essentially feed the, you know, feed the machine, uh, in essence. Um, the fact that they are in the top you know, one-tenth of one percent of, of physical ability to withstand the effects of this virus, um, you know, doesn't mean that they should necessarily be exposed to it unnecessarily. Um, you know, they, they probably have just as much right as everyone else um, to expect that their university will um, take reasonable steps to safeguard their health. Um, and it points to a fundamental problem that we have where uh, a large number of institutions of higher learning in this country 
uh, are actually going to find themselves in financial straits uh, mm -hmm. if the 2020 college football season does not happen. Um, that, you know, certainly that's a problem, but it, it's definitely a fact. Um, and I think that's something that, that makes you think we may have reached a little bit of a tipping point uh, in terms of, of how college football fits into the institutional landscape. Um, not necessarily at schools like the SEC. Let, let's be honest, the UGA Athletic Association has um, an emergency fund right now uh, that, that could fund um, some states uh, for a couple of months. I mean, they, they're, they're in great shape. Um, right. But you see schools like UConn, for example, coming out this week uh, and uh, cutting uh, a variety of sports, men's and women's, uh, and feeling the need to release a statement saying, well, yeah, we could have we could have moved football down to FCS, but the problem is that we wouldn't generate as much money. So, uh, you right. know, we're going to roll the dice. <laughs> yeah, the, the UConn the Yukon situation is is kind of a mess. I mean, they're kind of a laughing stock, anyways, with Randy Edsel's you know contract and stuff. But you know, stuff that was funny last year when they you know he got a two thousand dollar bonus for being the first to score doesn't really seem as funny this year <laughs> for sure. Right. What what is the so. You know, I mean, is there any chance, and I know the answer is probably no, but, you know, we're 69 days out, I think, or 68 days out from week zero um, in the start of football season. Is is there any chance that, you know, players could come together in an organized manner between now and then and say, look, you know, like, all of the uh, – operations of this institution are riding on whether or not 85 of us walk out of that tunnel you guys are going to pay us and you're going to keep your your school alive i mean you know i don't i, I don't, don't see I know that. that uh we've been look, waiting for something like that to happen for a generation now but if ever what there was a time where these guys have um some leverage i would think this is the the moment in, in time yeah i don't i don't see that happen in the next 50 days. I think you would have heard something rumbling on that before. Uh, I just think that also these kids, there's an, you know, an era of inv invincibility, you know, I mean, when I was, a, I wasn't even an athlete, you know, but you know, when you're 19, 20 years old, I mean, you, you, you don't fear anything. And, you know, I mean, I think these kids are not sick. They're carrying the virus, but they're not sick. So I, I don't, I don't see that necessarily coming together at this point. You know, I, I think, the, they're looking to the universities and the athletic programs to look out for their best interest. And I sure hope they are, but you know, like, you know, Jeremy said, you know, it's, it's all about the, you know, how do, how do we fund this stuff, you know, and how do we fund our athletic programs and all the non-revenue sports dependent on a college football season. Right. I mean, you guys as fans though, how would you feel if we see a college football season that's, you know, I don't know, maybe seven games or eight games and, there's 30 teams that aren't playing because the virus is really bad in their areas. And then there's, you know, 80 that are because they can, I mean, like, you know, what, do, is that possible? Do you think that's going to happen or do you think it'll be a unilateral decision of we either play or don't kind of across the, the NCAA? Yeah, I think some type of season is, is going to happen if there's any way to make it happen. Um, you know, the, the question is going to become, uh, you know, how many games, how long does it go on? Are there certain regions or there certain states and schools that have to cancel things? Um, given where we are from a public health standpoint and where we've been from a public health standpoint, against that backdrop, the, the idea of having anything that sort of resembles the traditional college football season is almost mind boggling. Right. right. Um, when you think about all the when you think about all the logistical issues, the hurdles that, that have to be overcome to make that happen. Um, I mean, and we've discussed on dog sports, I think, in a couple of comment threads, things uh, as granular as, OK, which season ticket holders get tickets to which games if you can only have 50 percent attendance. Right. right. Who, who, who is the person you tell? I understand you donated a gajillion dollars. I'm afraid we're just not going to be able to give you tickets to uh, the Florida game because we can't put that many people in the stadium. But we really want to give you the first option on these uh, you know, Colorado School of Mines tickets for the game we're going to end up <laughs> scheduling next year if this yeah. thing is, is not over. 
right? I mean, it, you know, it's a it, it's a, a problem uh, for them, and um, you know, we're not even considering the issue of you know them saying, okay, here are your allotted games. By the way, everybody, remember, no tailgating on on university property, um, no bringing outside food or beverage in. Um, you gaudily dressed disease vectors are going to need to stay at least 200 yards away from, from uh, our university facilities. Um, you know, it, it really is a situation where um, it, it's kind of like loaning a car to your 16 year old. If, if it comes home and you know, you're only missing one bumper, you kind of got to call it a win. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we, we just, you know, we, we're literally taking the, the put Daryl Walter in your car. As long as it gets across the finish line, um, it's success at this point from my perspective. Yeah. I mean, it's funny you bring up the, the Florida game because, you know, obviously Florida's in the news from, you know, basically spiking as like yeah. the biggest wave of the, the virus in the whole pandemic. So it'd be interesting. I mean, do they, do, you know, who calls the shots there? I mean, I guess each athletic program can call the tickets, but I mean, you know, even just, let's just say there's no fans. Just say they, that decision's taken away. Do, I mean, like, imagine just what these, it's going to look like, especially at a, you know, whatever the heck the name of the stadium is now. Uh, it's just an empty stadium there. It's it's going to be weird for sure. Well, I, yeah, and I, I mean, I think, you know, I read, there was a New York Times article that came out, I think either yesterday or the day before, and it was about Kansas State's football program. And, uh, you know, they've shut down, I think, until early July because of the number of cases they had. But when they brought everyone back to campus, everyone tested clear. They did 90 something tests on players and all of them were negative. And then, you know, same as LSU, it's going out to a bar or 20 players go to play video games at another one's house and it spreads like wildfire. And I know that in apparently in some of the conversations that uh, the coach Dana Kleiman had and the athletic director had with the, the players as everyone was under quarantine, there was a threat that was made that if you don't follow the the social distancing guidelines and, and the mask wearing and all that, that we could pull your scholarship. Now, is that, you know, I mean, that, that kind of seems outrageous to me. Um, you know, do we, do we expect that to happen that we're going to, you know, kind of decide it's so important to the bottom line that we're going to tell these kids, you know, you got to do this and, and really oh, kind of fully oh, for solidify sure. it. As a, oh, uh, for sure. I mean, school? yeah, Sabin and Dabo and, and Kirby, I mean, they're control freaks anyways, and that's how you run a program. So absolutely. These guys are going to be held to a standard uh, pretty high, I would think. And, you know, uh, that's, it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. And I hope, I mean, on, on a silly lighter note, if this is the year we win it all and it's a freaking <laughs> asterisk, <laughs> but, um, any rate, Jeremy, um, so what's, what's your gut feeling right now? What do you, what do you, what do you think if you had to make a prediction right now, on, you know, June 20 fifth or whatever it is that what's their football season going to look like? I mean, I think there's going to be some kind of college football season. And again, I think it's frankly because a, a lot of universities are, are in the position along with a lot of corporate interests that there has to be for, for their uh, continued survival. Um, you know, as Charlie Munger likes to say, you get what you incentivize. And um, we have as, as a culture, uh, and as a as a you know, body of higher learning, incentivized college football. We, we've made it a necessity uh, for a lot of people, and so I think you're going to get something that looks like college football. I think you, that people, for example, uh, like Gene Smith at Ohio State, uh, who said last week that that their hope is still uh, to be playing in front of a, a full stadium this fall, are um, they're either misleading themselves or they're misleading other people. Uh, that is just not tenable uh, with, with the trajectory of the virus that we've seen. Um, could it have been uh, if a lot of other things had gone well? Yeah, it's possible. Uh, we, we might have been able to do that. Uh, but with what we've seen in terms of numbers across the southeast, across the country, that's not going to happen. I think what you're going to see is you're going to see games played um, either, uh, you know, in empty stadiums or in partially filled stadiums, 
uh, and I think you're likely to see a truncated schedule. Um, but uh, again, the, the circus is going to come to town. Uh, it just may not be bringing, uh, you know, it may not be bringing all your favorite performers uh, to to the, the big top. And, and so, again, I don't think that's anything people should be that uh, down about. I think the fact that we get any kind of college football this fall should be something that with everything else that is going on in the world is, is worth celebrating. Right. Um, yeah, and it's worth and enjoying. It's, and I hope yeah. people do that. Oh, absolutely. I think that the psyche would be of uh, the American people, even, even non football fans would be really hurt. If we, if just the, there, everyone's looking for normalcy and to have such a huge part of our, our year just to be upset would be, yeah, it would it would have lasting effects outside of just college football fans. Graham, what do you what are you thinking right now, right before um, we enter July? Yeah, no, I think I think there's a lot that can happen in 69 days, and there's a lot that can go wrong. There's also a lot that can go well, um, and I'm I'm hopeful as an optimist that it, that it goes well, and we're we're able to see something resembling a a full schedule or a full conference schedule. Um, I also wonder a little bit, you know, how, how is this going to change the way that we consume the sport and are we going to enjoy college football season if, you know, the Monday after every game, we're all checking Twitter nervously for, you know, who tested positive and, you know, who's going to be out the next week because they have the virus and who's out for a month because they have the virus. Um, are we going to feel a little dirty if, uh, if that's kind of how this all goes down? And, you know, as much as I'm going to get excited if, if the Georgia Bulldogs are playing football anywhere, um, I also kind of am already a little bit sad about the, the lack of, I don't know, normalcy that will, that will come with that or the lack of, of purity, even though it's, college football is not pure at all. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's one of those things that I'll take what I can get, but I also feel like it's it's not going to really give us the the full fix that that a normal season would. Well, guys, um, maybe maybe if we do something like this in the future, we can talk about something more uplifting, and you know, maybe we'll get some good <laughs> news in the coming days. But but uh, guys, I appreciate all you're doing on Dog Sports. You guys have written some good 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 pieces and keeping us up to date and. And you know, keeping us in check on what really matters, and um, you know we're all excited about football, but you know we we we've got some other things to worry about. Anything else, gentlemen? Not for me. Right. Thanks, Josh. All right, all right. All right. thank you, guys. Take care. Thanks. All right. Cool. Cut the feed. Cut the feed. All right. And I'm going to go off air. Stop. All right.